you have to ask anybody's permission to watch this video? Of course not. That would be ridiculous. But the Liberals have a piece of legislation that is going to give the government a lot of control over what you can see and post online. I want to talk to you about free speech today. Censorship, it's everywhere. Whether it's Russia today, all Canadians, or me, censorship is back in fashion. This is Bill C-11. This piece of legislation will expand the powers of something called the CRTC. Now, what's the CRTC? You might not have ever heard about it. Well, if you've ever wondered why you can't get certain television stations or watch certain shows on Canadian cable packages, it's because in Ottawa, there is a group of people and they make decisions on what is safe for Canadians to watch. And the Liberals want to expand that into the internet. Imagine that, there's a government agency in Ottawa that makes decisions for you, to protect you from watching things that might make you un-Canadian all of a sudden. It took the children 40 minutes to locate Canada on the map. Marge, anyone can miss Canada, all tucked away down there. Under this bill, they will be able to make new regulations. Regulations don't have to pass through Parliament. With the stroke of a pen, the CRTC can make new rules about what you can post and what you can see online. They're even going so far to start to regulate what users who make revenue off of their YouTube channels have to comply with. It is simply impossible to regulate a platform like YouTube without also regulating creator content. It's like promising not to regulate books while regulating what can be sold in bookstores. It will undermine your ability to create content and have other people see it. It's going to affect what videos uh, come up in your YouTube stream. It's going to affect what uh, people are allowed to post on social media sites, all in the name of protecting you. But hold on, let's go back a second. This isn't just about Bill C-11 or the CRTC. This is about free speech. Freedom of speech used to be a unifying principle that both the left and the right would agree on. But as the radical left gets increasingly angry and intolerant, they're no longer interested in promoting their ideas or debating yours. They just try to stifle anyone who disagrees with them. Spurred on by the views of psychology professor Jordan Peterson. They drowned out his talk at McMaster University in March. And that's a hallmark of big government, isn't it? A telltale sign that a government is getting too big and too intrusive into our lives is always that it attacks free speech. When you go back and look at authoritarian regimes, they always start with attacking freedom of expression. And it's always done in the name of protecting you. You go back to the French Revolution where people were sent to the guillotine for speaking out against the atrocities committed during the revolution. Look at the Soviet Union, uh, East Germany. Even the Berlin Wall was originally called the anti-fascist wall. It wasn't sold to the citizens of East Berlin as a symbol of oppression designed to keep them inside a broken communist system. It was sold to them as a protection against an external threat. When big governments take away rights and liberties, they never tell their citizens that it's to make their life miserable. They always say it's to protect them or that it's for their own good. And that's exactly what the Liberals are doing as well. Creating a phantom bogus threat that they need to protect us from. And so they're going to give themselves massive power to regulate the internet. There is no question that the world is changing rapidly and getting more dangerous. Nous avons besoin de nouveaux outils, c'est pour ça que nous investissons une nouvelle façon de garder les gens en sécurité dans un monde. Freedom of expression and freedom of speech are so important because that's what gives you the right to argue for your point of view. And when you go back and look at the course of human history, it's always societies and governments that stifle free speech where innovation and human rights are also stifled. The only way we can discover truth is if we have our ideas tested and debated. And only when our ideas or our beliefs are put through that rigorous scrutiny and come out unscathed on the other side, can we be sure that something is true? We must make sure we live in a society where even if we don't like what's being said, we protect people's right to say it. That healthy debate of ideas, that clash of perspectives, that's what produces better results. Now, Justin Trudeau tells us to just trust him that this isn't about limiting fundamental rights and liberties. This is just about protecting
protecting you. Just trust him that he won't abuse this new power that he's giving his government. This is the same guy who froze the bank accounts of grassroots donors who were supporting protests for freedom. This is the same guy who interfered in a criminal court case and fired his attorney general when she wouldn't go along with his corruption. This is the same guy who used the COVID pandemic as an excuse to give a massive contracts to his friends at the WE organization. And this is the same guy who has increased funding to his friends at the CBC, sending them more of your tax dollars and creating a media subsidy program. Now he wants to be trusted with this new power. But the point is, it's not even just about Justin Trudeau. No government should have the power to control what you can see and post online. That's why we need to protect free speech. That's why this is important, that every Canadian should be very, very concerned about this. It's important that you get engaged on C11. Write your member of parliament. Let them know that you are opposed to the government having more power to control what you can see and post online. Social media is all about an interaction, so please leave comments below while you still can. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.